to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin. This is the gospel of Christ to proclaim good news unto the poor. The gospel of Christ, spreading the soul-saving message of Jesus. And now, Ben Bailey. This is the gospel of Christ. Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Mark chapter 16, verse number 16. And yet sometimes when we hear the, the clarity of those passages that teach baptism is essential to salvation, people begin to make objections. Today we hope to address those objections from the Scripture, and we encourage you to stay tuned and have your Bible handy as we study this subject together. Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at 1-855. 458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 21, Peter said, Baptism does now also save us. Jesus said in John 3, verse 5, Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Saul was told in Acts 22, verse 16, Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And on that first day the gospel was preached, on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2 verse 38, when they had cried out, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter responded under the direction of the Holy Spirit and said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Friend, as you look at the Bible teaching about baptism, three, these scriptures overwhelmingly teach baptism is essential to salvation, that one cannot be saved before he's baptized. And yet, oftentimes when people are confronted with this evidence from the scripture, they'll begin to make excuses. Well, I know the Bible says here, or this scripture seems to teach that, but... For this reason, or because of this objection, I don't believe baptism is essential to salvation. Friend, we want today, in love, to address those objections from the Scripture so that God's truth on baptism can be clearly seen. And so we ask you today to have your Bible handy so that we can open our minds and look together to the Word of God as we think about some objections that are often made to baptism. The first objection that I hear probably as much as any is people will say, well, I understand Jesus said baptism is essential to salvation. I know what Acts 2.38 says and, and we've heard those passages, but if I believe baptism is essential to salvation, 
that makes baptism a work. And the Bible says we can't work our way to salvation. Friend, there's no doubt that Jesus addressed the idea that the Jews had that they could earn their salvation. In both John chapter 6 and in John chapter 8, the Jews said to Jesus, because we're heirs of Abraham, in essence, we have the right to salvation. And Jesus said, God's able to raise up children of Abraham from these stones. Don't say to yourself, we've got Abraham as our father. The Jews had the mentality that because of their bloodline, because of being the descendants of Abraham, they had naturally had salvation. They could do these various works and be saved in God's sight. And God said, that's not the way it works. And yet, friends, sometimes that thinking that certain people, because of meritorious works, meaning that if we do enough things off the checklist, we can earn our way to salvation, sometimes that thinking comes over to the idea of obeying what God says. Let's not confuse meritorious works, where if we say enough Hail Marys or if we do enough things, we've earned our way to heaven with the conditions God set forth. Friend, there's no doubt. Listen carefully. There's no doubt that salvation is the free gift of God. And yet, that being true, that doesn't negate the fact that by faith, I have to respond in obedience. In fact, did you know that's exactly what the Scripture says in Ephesians 2 verse 8? By grace are you saved. There's God's part. Through faith. And that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. God's done His part. He's made grace available, salvation available. And yet it's by grace through faith. I must respond in obedience to the gospel. Now friend, here's the objection that we often hear and, and we think about it in some ways. People will say, if you believe baptism is essential to salvation, you're then making baptism a work and you can't have any works in salvation. Here's the major problem with that. The people who say that will also insist that one must believe in Jesus. Now you think about this in your own mind. Must a person believe in Jesus to be saved? Well, nobody's going to deny that. Everybody's going to say, absolutely, you've got to believe Jesus is the Son of God. Here's the problem then. Did you know the Bible teaches belief is a work? I want to direct your attention to the words of Jesus in John 6, verse 28 and 29. Would you look at this passage with me? The scripture records, Jesus saying, Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? What do we need to do to be pleasing in the sight of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God that you believe, listen now, in him whom he sent. Is it a work for God to do? Of course not. They want to know what do we have to do. And Jesus said, here's the work of God. This is the work God's given you. What is it? To believe in him whom you sent. Now friend, make it crystal clear in your mind. Jesus said, belief is a work. What type of work? Not a meritorious work. If I believe in Christ, can I then look up to heaven and say, God, I believed in your son. You owe me salvation. Of course not. I haven't earned it. But is it a conditional work? that I must meet. Absolutely. Friend, if belief is a work, then the whole argument of no works, conditional works, falls to the ground. It's not true. If we're going to say, I've got to believe in Jesus, then friend, one must repent as well. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. One must meet the condition of confessing Jesus. Jesus said, if you won't confess me before men, neither will I confess you before the Father. What about with belief and repenting and confessing? Are we going to say we earned it? No. Why is baptism different? It's just simply a condition God set forth that one must do. Listen again to the clarity of 1 Peter 3.21. Baptism does now also save us. Friend, if the Bible says baptism saves, we need to rethink some of these objections that people have put forth for baptism. A second objection that I often hear people say is, well, the Bible teaches, I know what these scriptures say about baptism, but the Bible teaches that a person is justified by faith only and nothing else. Wait a minute now. 
Is that really what the scripture teaches? I know full well there is a popular doctrine that says all you've got to do to be saved is believe in Jesus. People have gone around and promoted the idea of faith only. A friend, I would encourage you today to rethink that based on the scripture and here's why. Did you know the only time in the Bible the words faith and only occur together, God says the exact opposite of the faith only doctrine? And you think about that just a moment. A whole litany of false teachers and, and preachers have gone out and preached. The Bible teaches all you've got to be, do to be saved is have faith only. And the one time that expression occurs in Scripture, God says the exact opposite of what these teachers are saying. Now, let me show you from the Scripture that passage. Would you direct your attention to James chapter 2, verse number 24. The Bible says, You see then that a man is justified, just as if I'd never sinned, justified by works, now watch this, and not by faith only. What kind of works are we talking about? Again, we're talking about conditions. Things I've got to do. We're not talking about meritorious works where I can check off a list and I've earned my way to heaven. Nobody, the Bible doesn't teach that. That's not true, but are there conditional works I must do? Absolutely. But friend, don't miss this point. The Bible says men are not justified by faith only. The only time Faith only is mentioned in the Scripture. God says the exact opposite of what millions are teaching. And we recognize this. I mean, wouldn't we say to someone who wanted to be, let's say somebody is living a life of sin. Let's say they're living a life of, uh, of whatever it may be. They're, they're living a life of drunkenness or lying or thievery. Would we say to that person before they're saved, you're going to have to repent and change your ways before you can be saved? Absolutely, that's what Jesus said. Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Sure, you've got to do that. Well, friend, why do we think baptism is any different? If faith only doesn't save, then there's other conditions one must meet as well. Listen to the words of Jesus. Matthew 7, 21, Jesus forever taught faith only is not true. Jesus said in Matthew 7, 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Jesus clearly said, it's not enough just to say Christ's name, just to say, I believe in Jesus. You've got to do what he says. Remember John 14, 15? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Third, and probably one of the most popular objections that we often hear revolves around the old thief on the cross. You remember the scenario? Luke chapter 23, verse number 43, Jesus is on the cross. There is a thief on either side of him. And to one of the thieves who has a change of heart, Jesus said to him, This day, you will be with me in paradise. And so people will say, well, okay, Mark 16, 16, yeah, Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized be saved. Uh, John 3, 5, Jesus said, yeah, you've got to be baptized to get in the kingdom. Bible says baptism for the remission of sins. There's no doubt about those passages, but the thief on the cross was never baptized. Therefore, I don't have to be baptized either. Friend, this is a faulty argument at the very base of it. Let me illustrate. The argument goes like this. The thief was never baptized and he was saved. I, a person can be baptized and not be saved. Therefore, I don't have to be baptized to be saved. Question, if you were pressed to prove that, could you? Here's the problem with that argument. Here's the whole problem with it. It is a faulty argument. It's not a valid argument because you can't prove the thief was baptized and you can't prove he wasn't baptized. Now, friend, let me ask you this. Where in the Bible does it say the thief was baptized? Well, it doesn't. Where does it say he wasn't baptized? Well, it doesn't. It's an assumption either way. Are we going to base our salvation on an assumption? We can't, for an argument to be valid, every principle, every part of it has to be true. 
you can't prove one way or the other that the thief was or was not baptized. And therefore the argument, fall, it's, it's invalid and it falls flat on its face and it's very premise. You can't prove that. But friend, even if you could, why don't you consider this with me? The thief, would he be an example of salvation under the Old Testament or under the New? Now let's think about that. When did the New Testament begin? The Bible teaches in Colossians 2, 14 and in Ephesians 2, verses 14 and 15 that the old law was nailed to the cross and that the new law went into effect with the preaching of the gospel in Acts chapter 2. The thief, did he die before, did he, was he before the cross? You bet he was. The law didn't go into effect until after Jesus died on the cross. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 through 17. Law is in effect after men are dead. The old law is still in effect while this thief is on the cross. And so if we're going to use a thief for anything, he'd be an example of Old Testament salvation. I'm not going to use Noah. I'm not going to use David. I'm not going to use King Solomon, whoever it may be, as a New Testament example of salvation. The thief lived and died under the old law. and He's not an example of what must I do to be saved today. If I want to learn about New Testament salvation, the book that teaches me that is the book that starts with the gospel first being preached and goes into all the world. What book is that? Well, friend, it's the book of Acts. And every time, in conversion, in the book of Acts, baptism is a part of that teaching. And so the thief on the cross, he's not an example of New Testament salvation. And here, here's the more important part. You can't know one way or the other whether he was baptized or not. And the whole argument absolutely depends on that being true. A fourth objection that I often hear as it relates to baptism is based on this idea. Some will say, well, Jesus forgave people's sins without baptism in, the re in his life. Well, remember, Jesus was living all under the Old Testament. But remember this also, Jesus had the power to do that while he was here on earth. Do you remember Mark 2 verse 10? The Bible says, Jesus speaking, but that you may know the power that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, take up your bed and walk. He forgave that man's sins, but he had power while he was on earth to do that. Now, is Jesus still on earth doing that today, walking around? Of course not. But friend, do we realize what we do have? Jesus has given us His will, and that will tells us exactly what we must do to be saved. Jesus is not on earth. He's not here forgiving people's sins today in person as He was in the first century and living under the Old Testament. But He's given us the New Testament and it specifically tells us what we must do. Now, let's think about this then. Is it the case that all people today are going to be judged by not what Jesus did while He was alive on the earth, but by the words that He gave us in this book. We're not going to be judged by Jesus teaching to the paralytic while they were both living under the Old Testament. But is it the case we're going to be judged by His word today? Consider John 12, verse number 48. Jesus said this, He who rejects me and does not receive my word has that which judges him. Lord, what's going to judge us? The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. What am I to follow today? Friend, I'm to follow the teaching of Christ. I'm to obey that. I'm to love it. I'm to live it out in my life. And the New Testament is the law that I'm under today. And that's the law that men are compelled to obey by the teaching of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, another objection. A fifth objection that we often hear people say is, well, I know the Bible teaches in Mark 16, 16, he that believes and is baptized will be saved, but the latter part of that verse says that belief is the only con condition of which one can be condemned for. Meaning, when Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved, he then said, he that does not believe shall be condemned. And so Jesus only said those who don't believe are the ones who are going to be condemned. Now friend, this argument 
is not an argument based on the full teaching of Mark 16, 16. Consider this with me. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized will be saved. Now, friend, if you're not saved, what are you? Well, you're lost. If Jesus taught you've got to believe and be baptized to be saved, then friend, listen carefully, both belief and baptism are absolutely a condition for condemnation. It only takes a little thinking about this passage, a little common sense to realize if Jesus said, I've got to believe and be baptized to be saved, and I don't do one or both of those, I am lost and in a condemned state. Well, what about that latter part? He who does not believe shall be condemned. Friend, it would be utterly ridiculous for Jesus to say, Oh yeah, even though you don't believe, if you're not baptized, you'll also be condemned. Friend, if a person doesn't believe, are they a candidate to be baptized? Well, of course not. Well, what if a person does believe? True belief in the Scriptures, true faith in the Scriptures, always motivates a person to do what God says. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they encircled them for seven days. Hebrews chapter 11. Clearly, you read Hebrews 11, and true faith is always followed by an action word in that context. Thus, he who believes will be condemned clearly teaches that if you don't believe, you're not a candidate to be baptized, but if you do, you will obey God's teaching on this subject. Friend, consider seriously that a lot of objections have been made to the teaching of baptism to try to take away its clarity. But friend, that's not what the Bible teaches. God wants me. Let's think about the good and honest heart. God wants me to take what He says at His Word and simply do that. Listen again to what the Scripture actually says in Mark 16, 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe shall be condemned. Friend, did Jesus say there are two conditions that are essential to meet prior to being saved? Now you think about that a moment. Is that what Mark 16, 16 teaches? Friend, Jesus absolutely said that. If both of those are essential to be saved and I leave one or both of those out, I am lost. Friend, that's the clarity for which Jesus spoke. And it's not just in Mark 16, 16. It's throughout the New Testament. Jesus said in John 3, verse 5, unless, if and only if, unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he can't enter the kingdom of heaven. Can you get in God's kingdom, which is ultimately that which is going to heaven, without being baptized? Of course not. If that's true, Baptism is essential to salvation. Think about Galatians 3 verse 27. As many of us as were baptized into Christ have clothed ourselves with Christ. Where's salvation at? According to 2 Timothy 2 verses 10 and 11, salvation's in Christ. All spiritual blessings are in Christ. I want to be in Christ where salvation is. How do you get there? As many of us as were baptized into Christ. If I'm not baptized into Christ, I'm outside, not where salvation is, but where condemnation is. Think about the clarity of 1 Peter 3.21. Friend, I want you to think about this. If God wanted to say, you have to be baptized to be saved, to be right with me, how else could He say it any clearer than 1 Peter 3.21? Baptism does now also save us. Friend, if God says baptism saves us, then how dare anyone say baptism is not essential to salvation? And so as we think about these ideas, sometimes people will say to me, well, you know, maybe I didn't really understand that, but I've been baptized. Wait a minute now. Jesus said in John 8 verse 32, you've got to know the truth for the truth to make you free. You can't put, apply this knowledge to a, a scenario that happened where you were ignorant years ago and that somehow be okay. Jesus said, you've got to know the truth first, then the truth will make you free. If you had no clue 
why you were baptized, you didn't understand the teaching of it, or you were misled and taught error about that. And friend, have you been baptized correctly? Think about this question. Can you be taught wrong and baptized right? Well, of course not. If we don't understand, Jesus said you've got to understand. If we don't understand, how can we be saved if we didn't know the truth before we did it? And so, friend, today, here's what we ask of you. This is our first series of lessons on objections to baptism. We're going to have two lessons on this. We hope that you'll uh, stay tuned next time or look at the DVD as well for the second part of this lesson. But, friend, the Bible is so clear on this teaching and the objections that men raise. They don't hold water when it comes to the truth. But as we think about these ideas, friend, we're saying this not, not to be mean or unkind, we want to preach the truth in love. We're saying these things today because we love your soul. We want you to go to heaven. We want you to spend eternity with God. And friend, if you've been taught wrong or you are baptized in ignorance and you didn't understand these things, we're begging you, we're pleading with you today. Please obey the gospel plan of salvation as is taught in the scripture. What is that plan? The Bible teaches one must first Hear the Word of God. I've got to study my Bible. I've got to come to know the truth for myself. Jesus said, or Paul said in Romans 10, 17, Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Secondly, I must believe in Christ. John 8, 24, Jesus said, Unless you believe that I'm He, you'll surely die in your sins. Then one must be willing to repent. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. One must make the good confession. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 32 and 33, If you won't confess me before men, neither will I confess you before my Father who is in heaven. And then the scripture teaches, One must be baptized for the forgiveness of sins. Acts chapter 2, verse number 38. Friend, we're encouraging you today to study your Bible for yourself. Check these things out if they're true, if they're right. If the Bible teaches baptism is essential to salvation, don't obey it because we said it. Obey it because Jesus said it, because God said it, and because ultimately you want to please God and go to heaven. We pray that you'll do just that. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the gospel of Christ? The gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the gospel of Christ.